Welcome to the Elliot High Network. This broadcast has been brought to you by Elliot High TV on Newstream and the District Knowledge Network. I'm your host, Mariah. And Kasaya. We are broadcasting live from our feeder school, Eastern High School, in Washington, D.C. Our show topic is Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. Joining us as a special guest is the Deputy of Mayor uh, for Greater Economic Opportunity, Courtney Snowden. Our show topic today is Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. Our first segment is Understanding the Deputy Mayor for Greater Economic Opportunity, Courtney Snowden. Ms. Snowden, welcome to the show. Oh my God, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. How does it... How does it feel to be appointed by Mayor Bowser as the Deputy Mayor for Greater Economic Opportunity? It feels amazing. It feels amazing. So you know that I'm a sixth generation Washingtonian, so to serve the residents of my hometown, my family, my friends, my cousins, everybody, but to serve those um, who need to be um, supported by government and who live in overlooked and underserved communities has literally been the greatest joy of my life. I'll tell you one more thing. I ran for my council seat, uh, an at-large council seat in 2014, as you noted, and I lost. But the funny thing is about life, I lost, but ended up in the job I actually wanted, helping people in overlooked and underserved communities around the city. And so sometimes when you get knocked down, you get back up to something even better. And that, I tell you, is the greatest piece about serving uh, under this, this mayor. Who are some of your role models and why? Oh, great questions. So my parents, of course, are my very first role models. And my grandmother, um, who got up every day and went to work and struggled and did everything that they had to do to ensure that all three of us, my brother and my sister and myself, were successful. Um, I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to make me do, when we did Black History Month projects, they had to be on black people that people had not heard of. And so, uh, or that weren't sort of mainstream, well known. And the first person I, I did in second grade, we had to do a couple of those reports, was Thurgood Marshall. And I'll tell you, I have spent my life working to contribute to society in the way that the first African American Supreme Court justice did. Um, and so he, among many other people, he is my North Star. You have an extensive background in leadership. Talk to us about the power of having various goals in life. Uh, having various skills. Um, you know, I always think two things. Um, there are things that come naturally to you that you're really good at. What are you good at? Um, breathing. Breathing. <laughs> then you should keep doing it. That's good. What are you good at? Dancing. Dancing. Those are the things that come easy to you. I bet you're good at a few other things. You host a radio show, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the things that come easy to you, you should do, you should improve, you should work on. And the things that come tough to you, you should do too, right? Uh, and so there's some things that, are, that have been really hard for me that I'm not good at. My team will tell you I am not the most organized person. I'm working on keeping my desk clean. Um, but I, I have spent a lot of time working to improve the skills that I'm particularly good at, to refine those skills, um, and also to really try to fix the few, not the few, because there are many flaws I have, but the flaws that impede me from being successful. And so uh, I think really spending time learning your craft, honing your skills, um, and most importantly, improving the things that, make, that, that lend themselves to you being unsuccessful are how people should be spending their time is certainly how I have. In your opinion, why is it important for young adults to embrace their education regardless of their economic status? Because it is the thing that gets you out of poverty. So a smart person once said, the, the best way you can help poor people is not to become one. Now, they, they were being flippant when they said that. There are lots of things one can do to help those who have, have less or who need a little bit more help. Um, but an important thing is really ensuring that you get your education so that there, you get to make choices about your own life, right? So I'll tell you a story. I have a, a young guy who works in my office. His name, I won't say his name. He's a great kid. And this kid um, found out in his senior year of high school that he was not going to graduate because he had not taken math in three years. How, it, how did that happen? But it did. Well, he decided when they told him he couldn't walk the stage and that it would take him three more years to finish school, he decided to quit, right? Well, at 23, he still doesn't have a high school diploma, which means it's six years from the time they told him that. And the reality is, had he taken one class every year for three years, he'd have been a high school graduate. Well, now there are opportunities that 
are available to him, but he can't access those opportunities because he didn't pursue his education. He didn't get his high school diploma. He didn't go to college. He didn't pursue post-secondary education through the form of a training or a certification program. And so now he's stuck in the same place today at 23 that he was at 17. Education can make all the difference. Now there are, of course, stories. There's Little Wayne or Bill Gates who didn't finish college or high school, but those are not the rule. Those are the exception to the rule. Those are some, just some very special people. I'll tell you, I'm not that special. I could not be happier that my parents forced us to finish our education. It wasn't even an option in our house. And that made all the difference. And I'll tell you, the great equalizer is education and commitment. If you get your education and you work as hard as you can, you can achieve anything. No matter where you start. No matter where you start in life. The Washington Post endorsed you as a candidate. How would you feel? <laughs> I still can't believe they did that. Um, I, the night that I found out, I was at a meet and greet, and a friend of mine texted me and said, congratulations on the endorsement. And I said, what endorsement? And she said, the Post endorsement. And I said, the Post didn't endorse me. And she said, yes, they did. And I found it, and they had. I almost fell out in the floor. I might have fallen out in the floor. Um, and it was a great feeling. I grew up reading the Post, right, for all of my assignments in school. And my father made us read the paper every day. So I grew up reading the Washington Post. And to see my name in it and them say that of all of the candidates in the race, I was the best for the job, it meant more to me than almost anything throughout that race, except for when there was one guy, one gentleman, who donated $3 to my campaign every single month. And it sounds like a little bit of money, but it ended up being, I think, $15. And I knew that $15 meant something to him, so it meant a lot to me. So the Washington Post endorsement was a big deal. Talking to residents across the city was a big deal. Hearing from them that they thought that I could do the job to improve the city and really hearing what their concerns were and what their best ideas were, fantastic pieces. But the best thing was, you know, this is my hometown, right? D.C. made me. Um, and that endorsement really helped further um, validate how amazing this city is at, at every level um, because I was relatively unknown and the Post, even though they knew that, thought I was the best person for the job, which meant a lot. If you, if you could select one word that describes your work ethic, what would it be and why? One word. Um, aggressive. This is what I, I, I tell people all the time. I may not be the smartest in the room. I may not be um, the best prepared, although I'm probably pretty well prepared. <laughs> um, but there's no one that will outwork me. If the job needs to be done, I will stay until it was, is finished and I will come back. Um, and I think everyone in my life, everyone I've worked with in my life has seen that. I, I, I have had the honor of being pretty successful. I may partner in my firm when I was 29 years old, um, and it is because I was tireless. There was never a day that I left the office, and you know, maybe later in my career, but early on, in the first seven years I was at the firm, there was never a day I left my office before my boss did, um, because I wanted him to know that I was always going to be there uh, if he needed anything, and if, if, if the job was not yet complete, that I would be there as well. So that means I worked some Sundays, it meant I worked some Saturdays, it meant I worked some holidays. Um, but I'm tenacious and, and I was, my ethic is pretty aggressive. I'm going to get the job done no matter what. Um, so I guess that would be the work. Yeah. Talk to us about the importance of you, uh, contributing to your community. You know, it's interesting. Um, I started working campaigns when I was five years old. My mother always gave back. I used to say my mom, you know, people take in stray animals. My mom took in kids. And so always in our house, there was someone who needed uh, a pillow to lay down on. My mom made that available to them. And my son came to me in that same way. He needed a, a place to go, and I offered him that place. And I tell you, he's changed my life in some pretty remarkable and positive ways. I think the best feeling I've ever had in my life, the times where I felt my work was the most valuable, was when I was giving back to the community that made me. And for me, I, I can't imagine a life without service uh, in some form or fashion. And, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people in this city, no matter where they live or how much they have or don't have, um, 
give back to the city in some pretty remarkable ways, right? There's, uh, I can think of a, a woman who lives in one of the housing projects in D.C. And on, on 37th Place, Starter Terrace, and she mentors every kid, uh, every young woman in that, in that housing project, and there are a lot of young women. And I think about how she could be doing anything else, but she does that to help improve her community and help to ensure that those young women don't make some of the same mistakes she and others have made. Or I think about um, a woman that my mother knows who every morning rounds up every kid in the neighborhood to make sure that they get to school on time. And she walks them to school every morning and she makes sure they each have breakfast on her own dime and she ensures that they get to school on time and she tries really hard to make sure their homework is done. And she doesn't have to do it. She does it all out of her own pocket and she doesn't have a lot. And I think how rich her life is and how impactful it is, how many young people's lives every day she's changing. And I think if more of us stepped up to do things like that, to take care of our neighbors and to help support um, people in our communities, our city would be very different, uh, particularly in those hardest hit by some of the most difficult things like violence or low employment. In your opinion, what makes a great leader? What makes a great leader? That's a great question. And I think every day, um, I refine, I, I refine this answer, but I think um, a willingness to listen to people and really hear uh, what they're saying and what they need, a willingness to help people do for themselves and improve the quality of their lives themselves and really t tap into their talents to improve their community. But I think an unwavering commitment to doing what's right, right? Integrity is what you do when no one else is looking and making sure that people making sure that I lead, uh, and I actually in part get to, I watch the mayor do this every single day. She leads uh, when it's hard, she doesn't quit when it's hard, um, and she's always gonna make the decision based on her values no matter what, no matter who's looking. And for me, that is the sign of, of the best leaders and I hope to emulate that uh, every day as well. What steps should we take in order to remain focused in high school and college? You guys? Well, you're already doing it. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I sit in this room and I'm watching these young people do some pretty amazing things, things that I'm not sure even as an adult I could do. Um, the things you have to remember is, I think, is that there are going to be times when it is easier to quit than to move forward. And that when you have those times, you remember that there's a bigger prize at the end. I think everything you can learn in life, you can learn from Beyonce. I swear to God, that's true. She has a song called Freedom, and in that song she says, winners don't quit on themselves. I'm gonna keep running because winners don't quit on themselves. And I think about that every single morning. Winners don't quit. No matter the circumstance, no matter the fight, winners always work hard to get the job done. Whatever success looks like, they, no matter what, they will get to success. If they say you got to run through those, ca those cabinets and the wall, I'm going to run through that cabinet and, and the wall to get it done, right? Well, that's what, that's what this takes. That's what success takes, and that's what I hope you all do in high school, in college, in your careers. Every summer when you have an opportunity to get a summer job, every opportunity you someone presents to you, you take advantage of it with full force because winners don't quit on themselves. I'm telling you, Beyonce knows all. You can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> you can laugh, it's okay. What, what are some of your in, in, initiatives that you are focused on within the office of the deputy mayor for greater economic opportunity? So, you know, the mayor created this position on the campaign trail as the deputy mayor for East of the River Affairs. And in our city, East of the River is obviously Ward 7 and 8, and it's where we have the greatest concentration of poverty, highest unemployment levels, um, and most significant social challenges. Now, uh, my that job was uh, recreated when we when the mayor got into office and became deputy mayor for greater economic opportunity where I'm focused on expanding opportunity um, to every single person in the city to ensure that prosperity that has run through this city like something many of us never ever expected that it touches every single person in the district no matter where they live but most importantly that they can benefit from it so there we have some pretty major initiatives that we're particularly proud of how many of you have been on H Street been to H Street before? You've been to H Street before? So H Street has been a commercial area for quite some time, and Columbia Heights and U Street, all true. H Street and then U Street, um, unfortunately, in the 60s, experienced riots after King died, right? And 
the reality is while many of those businesses didn't survive the riots, some did and others were built and those businesses were there. Well, when prosperity came to the city and economic development came and communities shifted over, um, some of those businesses couldn't adapt or make it. So we found we launched a program in May called Project 500, where we're focused on growing 500 small businesses east of the river. And the reason why we're focused on that is because we want to ensure that when prosperity comes to 7 and 8, and it's coming and coming fast, um, that it comes with uh, a focus on making sure that those businesses can adapt. And so we started that in a partnership with American University Center for Innovation in the Capitol. We're very proud of that work. I was at a community meeting uh, early in my time in this administration, and a young man stood up and he said, Deputy Mayor, I was in jail for uh, 16 years. I did everything I was supposed to when I was there. I got my high school diploma. I got my associate's degree. I got every certification I could get. I can build a house by myself, and I can't get a job. And I said, well, brother, you need to stop looking for a job. You need to start your own business. And I created a program that would help him do that. It's called Aspire to Entrepreneurship, where we help uh, returning citizens write business plans and get funded and save money with a, with a matching um, bank account, basically, where we meet them where they are. Um, and if they save $1,000, they'll get an $8,000 return to mm. start their own business, right? That's a good return. One to eight, that's a great return. Um, and what's particularly exciting about that is we know that once they are successful in starting their own businesses, they will hire other returning citizens, which sometimes face the most barriers. Um, we've expanded the Summer Youth Employment Program, now named after its founder, Marion Barry. Like everyone who grew up in D.C., Marion Barry gave me my first job through SYAP. Uh, and so now 22 to 24 year olds can take advantage of that program and we're incredibly proud of that. A thousand young people who otherwise wouldn't have a summer opportunity now have one through the expansion of this program. And the two other programs that we've created that I'm also particularly proud of, one is called the LEAP program, Learn, Earn, Advance, and Prosper. I smile when I say that because when I was on COJO, I forgot what the acronym stood for, which was not good. But now I remember. I don't think I'll ever forget it. And it's a program where we train district residents for good-paying D.C. government jobs. For a long time, D.C. residents had a hard time breaking into D.C. government. Well, not now. We've created a program, a 12-month training program, to prepare them for the jobs that exist in government, and, and, a, and not just a, a job, but a specific job that we train them for, prepare them for, and then at the end of 12 months, they get hired in that position. So we're incredibly proud of that. And finally, a program that is very near and dear to my heart is called Career Connections. And Career Connections is a program for 20 to 24 year old young people who have made some poor choices and have somehow gotten involved in the justice system. With this program, we provide them work experience, we pay them and incentivize them to do additional work through training um, and get their certification or GED, but they get nine months of employment too, so we solve two problems. We put them on a pathway to the middle class by actually giving them a job, but we also do it by helping them to get training and better prepared for the jobs that exist today and the ones that are coming down the pike tomorrow. We're excited about that program in particular because we know that if we can catch them before they make a really bad choice uh, and make a choice that's so bad that they can't reverse it, if we can get them before they do that, then maybe they won't make that choice and in fact we will make different choices and bring their friends along. So we've been incredibly excited about that program. We've even expanded it to focus on interrupting violence in communities that have been the hardest hit by violence and we're using young people or working with young people um, to help us get to the folks who, who need the services the most. We're doing a lot in our office to improve the quality of life, to make sure that we're rebuilding and revitalizing communities east of the river. Um, and I'm really proud of the work we're doing there. Really proud of it. Do you have any final thoughts for the students at our time? I have so many thoughts, but I'm gonna try to be brief. The thing I, I want young people to know is that this city is incredibly proud of them. The mayor, we, we, had an, we have an I Wish You Knew campaign where we, uh, we started uh, after the Ferguson uprisings um, where we had young people and others in the community tweet and go on social media and talk about what they wish uh, people knew about them so young people tweeted all sorts of things I wish you knew I wasn't a criminal I wish you knew that I had a 4.0 GPA I wish you knew that I wanted to be president and I, a whole bunch of positive things and police officers tweeted out I wish you knew I wanted to get home safely to my family every night I wish you knew I wanted you to win more than more than you want to win I wish you knew that if you need help I'm actually here to help you all sorts of things and what I always say to young people and what the mayor always offers too is I wish you knew just how proud we are of all of you when I look at the young people, I spent my morning with some SYEP young people and I knew I was coming here to hang out with you guys. I was pretty excited about that too. You guys inspire 
me to be better, to do better, to achieve more, to work harder, to stay later. And it's because I know that if we get this right for you, we can really change the city for every single person in it. We can really make it better. And so the things I always leave with young people that I want young people to always know is that this entire city is standing up for you. We are pushing you, hoping, wanting you to win, wanting you to be successful. Like I said, it's true. Everything I learned, I learned from Beyonce, right? So winners don't quit on themselves. And so we always have to remember that, that if you want something bad, badly enough, you just have to work hard for it. You will get it. There are going to be tough moments. There are going to be hard times. But if you work hard enough, you will get it. Um, talent is ubiquitous. Everybody around us has a talent. Everyone has something that comes easily to them that they do incredibly well. For my son, he draws well, right? I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, but he can draw all sorts of things, and he's seven. Um, talent is ubiquitous, opportunity isn't. So when someone gives you an opportunity or makes an opportunity available to you, attack it, take advantage of it, live in it, because you don't know when your next one's gonna come, and you also don't know who's paying attention, right? And then the last thing I try to leave with young people and adults, too, is what Jesse Williams said at the BET Awards. Everybody watch the BET Awards? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm He had one of the best lines I've ever heard. Just because we're magic doesn't mean we aren't real. Well, we are real, but we are magic. You are magic. And anything, and I mean this, anything you want to accomplish, you can. Who would have ever thought that Hillary Clinton would be the Democratic nominee for the White House? Hillary Clinton probably thought it, but maybe some others didn't. Who would have ever thought that Barack Obama would be president or Loretta Lynch would be the Attorney General of the United States, an African-American woman, or that Eric Holder would be the, the, the former uh, Attorney General of the United States, or that the mayor would be a young African-American woman who grew up in War Five named Muriel Bowser, or that Courtney Snowden might actually be deputy mayor, right? Or that Crystal Snowden, my sister, or Mandrell Burks would be a teacher working with young people, improving the quality of their lives, right? Who would have ever thought? And all of us contribute in different ways, all of us. Misty Copeland is a ballet dancer and one of the most prominent ballet companies in all of the country. Who would have ever thought, country, in all of the world, who would have ever thought that that would have been her life? She certainly didn't dream that big, right? And so if people attack those opportunities, if people remember that we're magic, and if they, people don't quit on themselves, I promise you, everything you want in life will come to you. I promise. Deputy Mayor Snowden, thank you for allowing the Elliott High Network to conduct an interview with you. Thank you for having me. This is fantastic. You'll have to come see me in my office next time. Okay. This broadcast has been brought to you by Elliott High TV on Ustream and the District Knowledge Network. Have, have a, a great, great day. day.